Life is a sparkling diamond with countless hidden gems. It is best for those who enjoy it, difficult for those who compare it, but worse for those who criticize it. So what matters in the end is our attitude and thoughts which actually define it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Dr. Tapaswini's Corner. And that's me, and I work as a head and neck cancer surgeon at the Fortis Hospital, Delhi. Today's episode will highlight numerous issues pertaining to ovarian cancer, also described as a silent killer. To discuss in depth on its various aspects, we have with us today an exceptionally talented and renowned gynae oncosurgeon from Bangalore, Dr. Som Shekhar. You are the Chairman Oncology and Head of the Department of Surgical and Gynae Oncology at the Manipal Cancer Center, Bangalore. You also hold the position of Director Robotic Surgery Fellowship and Breast Oncoplasty Surgery Fellowship at the Manipal University. Your work has been extensively centered around the management of advanced gynecological cancers, complex cytoreductive surgeries, different forms of chemotherapy techniques, HIPEC, BIPAC, intraperitoneal chemotherapy have all been advocated, promoted, and practiced under your able pioneership. With more than 300 publications in the national and international journal, your research skills have been widely recognized across the globe. Times Healthcare Achievers Award, Millennium Gold Medal Award, and the prestigious Dr. D.D. Patel Gold Medal have been additional feathers in your cap. Welcome Dr. Som Shekhar to the show. It's a great pleasure and honor to have you here today for this program. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tapaswini. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. You know that uh, me clinicians, you and me, you are also a surgical oncologist like me. We have two facets. One part of our satisfaction is treating our patient and making them all right. But the Absolutely. second one is actually, you know, sharing and connecting with the public and like-minded yes. people like you. So yes. it's uh, my pleasure and honor to be here and wonderful. Lovely, sir. Lovely. How are the overall statistics of ovarian cancer when we compare developing vis-a-vis -vis the developed nations, one, and also ovarian cancers with respect to the other cancers? Absolutely. You know, there is some unique way when we compare the East versus West, developed right. versus developing countries. So the things change a lot. Like, for example, there are some cancer which are for upper strata, the breast mm -hmm. cancer, the endometrial cancer they actually are more, uh, you know, in Western world. And cervical cancer and other cancers are more common with us. But unfortunately, the ovarian cancer is not so. It is called mm -hmm. silent killer. We know that normally in Asian countries and African countries, it is usually three per 100,000. In Western right. world, like Africa, North America, it is eight per 100,000. Mm -hmm. So in India, we have 8.6 per lakh ovarian cancer, as per the mm -hmm. National Cancer Registry Program we have. And it is okay. postulated that in India, there is one out of 78 women will get an ovarian cancer. One out of 108 women will die of ovarian cancer. Oh. So unfortunately, even though this is not in a very high incidence, the mortality mm -hmm. is quite high. Okay, okay. So is there a particular age group that we see these diseases? Absolutely. Uh, again, uh, there is some unique phenomenon to cancers in India. You know that mm -hmm. most of the cancers in India are a decade early, like, okay. you know, like the breast cancer and the ovarian cancer. Typically in Western world, the peak of ovarian cancer is between 55 years to 65 years, somewhere around 63 is the median. Okay. But in India, the peak is 45 to 54. What do we notice? It is one decade early. So young women during their productive life, unfortunately, are hit with the tsunami of ovarian cancer. So in mm -hmm. India, it is a decade early. 10% of ovarian cancer in India, unfortunately, happen less than 32 years. So uh, in India, the peak is 45 to 54. Western world is 60 to you know, 64. And we have very large group of young 
women with ovarian cancer so uh, as you said that uh, there are there is an age group which affects the young but we also get to hear ovarian cancers in teenagers so what is this picture and how is it and how do these little girls present vis-a-vis the ovarian cancer in the older women absolutely uh, you know there is a bimodal distribution we have for this ovarian cancer mm-hmm. while the elderly at perimenopause and menopause end up with epithelial ovarian cancer right the young group you know who are just completed the pediatric group so in age between 6 to 25 35 actually there is a, another unique type of ovarian cancer which happen which we call germ cell ovarian tumor you know their gonads ovaries are just mature they're growing up so there is a specific group of ovary cancer called germ cell tumor which happens in that population and okay. the most important thing is 45% of them actually come with pain of the one remember ovarian cancer is called silent killer mm. the reason is they don't produce any symptom straight away they come in third stage but the pediatric and young age germ cell actually present with pain of the one but okay. the beauty is they are highly curable highly chemo sensitive and we can always do a fertility preserving cancer wow. so the myth like young women will not have cancer no if you have something you know please always get it treated with your doctor it could be ovarian cancer but treatable okay so uh, let's tell our listeners as to what are the factors which increase the risk of ovarian cancer okay, you know the main basis we need to understand is what is the cyclical change that happens in ovary mm-hmm. there is a surface on the ovary every month a ovary follicle is produced it is broken ovary is you know egg is produced and then it repairs so there is a constant wear and tear and damage this right. is what is one of the risk factor which means if somebody doesn't have enough pregnancy you know parity if they have multiple children then mm-hmm. they have lactation for an year period is stopped ovulation is stopped so that is a protective phenomenon so okay. increased age is a risk factor obesity which is very common problem now we are also moving towards unfortunately westernization of lifestyle so obesity is a risk factor nulliparous a lady who has no children or probably not more than one is at more risk because their ovary number of menstrual cycle and ovulation in a woman's time if it is mm-hmm. longer than it is a risk factor women after menopause if they taken hormone replacement therapy hrt is a risk factor in okay. addition to all this there is a genetic factor called as genetic gene hereditary breast cancer syndrome so right. these are the factors which we need to keep in mind okay how about smoking and some dietary issues which could be there in the causation yeah. you know in general if you ask me uh, does smoking directly impart epithelial ovarian cancer the answer is no unlike cervical cancer okay but there is one rare variety of ovarian cancer which we call mucinous tumor okay. these tumors are you know chemo resistant they don't respond well to chemo this particular group a causation smoking as an etiology is found obesity and diet is directly linked Okay. you know you are obese you have got 6 to 8% more chance of ovarian cancer so so uh, you also elucidated on issues that this could be uh, having a strong family history so how important is to do a genetic mutation analysis and genetic counseling of our patients absolutely that's a very essential component mm-hmm. uh, for the listeners i want to say two things there is something called as familial cancer syndromes and hereditary so we carry these genes from a mother grandmother the most common is a brca braca1 braca2 genes right this is present in 15% of population in india if you mm-hmm. randomly check 100 women 15 of them would harbor this okay so it is found that 18% of ovarian cancer women would have this gene if they have braca1 50% of them are going to develop ovarian cancer in their lifetime very high number mm-hmm. if you have braca2 genes 20% of you will actually develop ovarian cancer this is one of the reason there is a big landmark study from australian group okay which told 
every woman who has a high risk for ovarian cancer should have a genetic testing done genetic counselor are available so it is very important to do this genetic mutation test now they are fairly available even though not very economical they are fairly available they cost between 10 to 20000 uh, mm-hmm. and most of the centers do offer them. right right good great but uh, tell us uh, how important is screening so if we have to really diagnose and detect our patients early what would be the role of screening in the population you know this is something very uh, irony uh, mm-hmm. we doctors oncologists always uh, tend to blame the patient we say why did you come late yes. uh, why are you not me screening for yourself uh, but there are some unique cancer in the body where screening changes like breast cancer cervical oral cancer unfortunately mm-hmm. ovarian cancer in spite of being a aggressive cancer silent killer in a normal population who are not high risk genetic carrier Okay. Screening has not, unfortunately, shown to identify cancer early, which means you know it is it is quite sad for us because this is like lung cancer. We know it is morbid. So, like lung cancer, ovarian cancer for common public, mm-hmm. screening has not made an impact. However, okay. if there is a family history of breast ovary cancer, you right. fall into high group. This group should undergo a regular screening at an engage which should be started at an engage okay right but uh, dr so tell us uh, there are certain preventive measures also do we advocate some sort of surgery which we call as prophylactic surgery to prevent this cancer absolutely uh, you know taking this cue from uh, the screening does it make an impact in ovarian cancer there were two large studies one was done in uk which looked at in common population prophylactic treatment and surgery and screening did it make an impact that didn't make an impact in the survival outcome however if you are identified with braca 1 or 2 gene or rad mutation gene or you have a hereditary family syndrome in that group there is a type of surgery called prophylactic risk reduction surgery okay they save life now in ovarian cancer what is this surgery simple day care laparoscopic tubes and ovary ring wall the new concept is even though ovary cancer is in ovary it comes from the edge of the tube so removing mm-hmm. the tube medical term we call that salpingo ophorectomy it's a small day care procedure done with 5 mm keyhole this is a risk reduction surgery in high risk group it saves and prevents 99% of the time ovarian cancer developing okay so when we are talking about prophylactic surgery so this is doing surgery before the cancer appears Absolutely. right okay so when we say risk reduction prophylactic surgery it is not a patient but a normal person walking among us as of today not having a disease but right. before seeing medical technology they have high chance of cancer later correct correct so when we say that uh, ovarian cancer is a silent killer can you just elaborate a little bit more on it okay see it is something like that you know we say a third sense suppose a tsunami is coming you know okay the weather changes birds fly and sky run. so every bad thing that happens in world there is some subtle change nature has given right so if you are going to be hit with a big disease like ovarian cancer we expect maybe i don't feel like eating or i have a change of voice or you think that okay there is a lump or a bump you know your body well or there is an alteration in the bowel movements or there is a change in the monthly period cycle unfortunately ovaries are deep hidden organ in our tummy covered by lot of other structures right. and they are not attached to anything major so until they come to stage 3 they don't throw any symptom no mm-hmm. pain no loss of food no lumps bump felt oh. so the day you feel a bloating sensation and tummy bloats up with water already it is stage 3 that's why ovarian cancer is called as a silent killer because even in the most even a doctor who themselves have this cancer in spite of all the knowledge the examination they identify two third of them come only in stage 3 so the moment you are at stage 3 2 out 
today in the world 